Cotton is one of the most important crops in America, with a long history dating back to colonial times. It is not only a vital part of American agriculture, but also a key component of the global textile industry. The 14.68 million bales of cotton produced by American farmers in 2022 contributed to the creation of clothing, bedding, and other essential textile products that are used around the world. Cotton farming is also a significant contributor to the U.S. economy, with the industry supporting over 126,000 jobs and generating more than $75 billion in annual economic activity. From the humid southeast to the dry west, cotton is a crop that can be cultivated in a variety of climates and soil types. This flexibility allows American farmers to produce cotton in different regions, which helps to spread out production risks and ensure a stable supply of cotton for the textile industry. Today, American farmers produce millions of bales of cotton every year, making the United States one of the largest cotton producers in the world. But how do they do it? Let's take a closer look. It all begins with seedbed preparation. The farmers carefully prepare the soil using techniques that have been passed down for generations. Some plow deep into the soil with a plow, while others use less aggressive tilling methods to disturb the soil as little as possible. And then there are those who have embraced a new way of farming, no-till farming. No-till farming is a revolutionary method that involves planting crops without disturbing the soil at all. Instead, farmers plant the cotton seeds directly into the previous year's plant residue or cover crops, which helps to maintain soil health and reduce soil erosion. This method has become more popular in recent years, especially in areas with high soil erosion, as it allows farmers to maintain yields while improving soil quality and reducing water runoff. After preparing the soil, the cotton seeds are planted, but achieving the right plant population can be challenging. The goal is to find the right balance between planting too many seeds, which can lead to overcrowding and competition for resources like water and nutrients, and planting too few seeds, which can result in lower yields and wasted space. In dry land regions where rainfall is scarce, some farmers may plant fewer seeds per meter to save costs and reduce the demand for limited water resources. On the other hand, in short season environments where the growing season is shorter, planting more seeds per meter is recommended to compensate for the limited time and increase the number of branches that can develop on the plants. It's a delicate balancing act for farmers to find the optimal number of seeds to plant per meter, ensuring that they achieve a bountiful harvest. In the Texas High Plains, where cotton is grown in the largest quantity in the United States, the environment is a bit challenging. The region has higher elevations and less rainfall, which means farmers need to be creative in how they plant and grow their crops. One common technique is skip row planting where some rows are left empty to provide more water to the plants in the remaining rows. To keep the plants healthy, farmers use herbicides and other treatments to protect them from diseases and insects. Once the plants start growing, farmers keep an eye on them to make sure they're growing properly. If the issues such as pests, diseases, and weeds persist, they may need to replant certain areas of the field. To make sure the crop is ready for harvest before the first freeze, Farmers prefer using early maturing cotton varieties. While in areas where the soil is not as fertile, farmers use late maturing cotton varieties to maximize the yield. Since the soil in the region can become compacted and winds can blow sand over the plants, it's important to use cotton seeds that grow quickly and have large leaves to give them the best chance of survival. As cotton plants mature and start to produce flowers, farmers closely monitor the fields. Plant growth regulators may also be used to control the length of the stems and encourage growth. During the four to five weeks after flowering begins, farmers intensify their scouting efforts to ensure that the plants are growing as expected. Additional herbicide applications may also be necessary. The crops are typically left alone during the second or third week of flower. Later in the season, the plants may start to show signs of nutrient deficiencies which indicate that they are nearing maturity and will soon be ready for defoliation. Finally, the harvest season arrives. Harvesting cotton has come a long way since the first patent was acquired for a mechanical picker. It took almost a century for functional cotton pickers to become available to the American farmers. Today, there are two main types of cotton harvesters, pickers and strippers. 
Strippers use narrow openings to catch bowls, leaves, and branches, and transport the material to a basket. Pickers, on the other hand, use spindles to grasp the seed cotton and pull it from each bowl, leaving all other plant material, including burrs, in the field. But how do farmers decide whether to use pickers or strippers for harvesting their cotton crops? Pickers are more commonly used in regions with tall cotton plants and are extremely famous for producing high-quality fiber, which is valued by textile mills. However, pickers require a more skilled operator and may be less effective in harvesting short-stature cotton or cotton that is damaged by high winds. Strippers, on the other hand, are better suited for harvesting short-stature cotton plants and storm-proof varieties. It can also be more efficient in areas where the yield potential is low. Nonetheless, strippers typically produce low-quality fiber due to the increased amount of plant material that is harvested along with the cotton. They also require additional processing to remove the debris from the harvested material. Overall, the choice between using a picker or a stripper depends on factors such as the type of cotton being grown, the region it's grown in, the yield potential, and the operator's skill level. After cotton is picked from the fields, it is transported to a place called a gin lot. Here, the cotton is carried in modules, which are basically large rectangular bales. These modules are more commonly used nowadays instead of basket trailers, allowing for continuous harvesting without stopping to dump seed cotton. At the gin, the cotton goes through a process where the lint is separated from the seeds and other debris. The separated lint is then compressed into bales, each weighing around 480 pounds. Samples from each bale are tested in a laboratory to determine the quality of the cotton fibers. Although the number of gins in the United States has decreased from 1,274 in 1996 to 556 in 2016, the amount of cotton processed has remained fairly steady. In 2016, 17.5 million bales of cotton were processed, and 16.7 million bales were processed in 2017. The world of cotton farming can be a roller coaster ride of highs and lows, and the past few years have been no exception. The United States Department of Agriculture reports that in 2021, U.S. cotton farmers produced an impressive 17.5 million bales of cotton, a stark contrast to the 14.7 million bales produced just a year later in 2022. What could be causing these dramatic dips in production? Fluctuations in demand and prices are major factors that impact the global market for cotton, which can ultimately impact the profits of U.S. cotton farmers. But that's not all. Synthetic fibers have become increasingly popular as an alternative to cotton, driving down demand and prices. Even changing consumer preferences towards other natural fibers or synthetic materials have also had an impact on the cotton industry. Extreme weather conditions such as droughts, floods, and hurricanes can also cause crop losses and damage to cotton farms, affecting production levels and profits. And finally, rising production costs have made it more challenging for farmers to turn a profit. Despite these challenges, the cotton industry is finding new ways to adapt and prosper in an ever-changing market. The cotton industry has come a long way since its humble beginnings, but it still faces many obstacles today. From the impact of climate change to the ever-changing market demands, cotton farmers must constantly adapt to stay profitable. However, despite these challenges, the cotton industry remains resilient and continues to thrive. As consumers, we have the power to make a difference by supporting sustainable and responsible practices in the cotton industry. By making informed choices and demanding transparency in the production process, we can help ensure that the cotton industry remains a vital part of our economy and our world for years to come.